Hello and welcome to my channel. My name is Doodle Robot and today we're going to do another series of the whip flip. So welcome. I've been working this weekend on Hannah Carlson. This is the Daydreams book. Uh, we have a whole group working in this book. This is a past due one that I didn't get done in time. But I, you know, I don't know. It just called to me this weekend, so I've been working on it. It's been underway for a while. I think in my last whip blip, whip blip I showed how to do the bark there. I, I envision this as like the tiny life at the base of a tree. I think that I titled it something like that. Um, and I really like how it's coming along. I like the bright, surreal kind of colors that I'm using. So I thought I would stop and discuss that a little bit. Uh, you can see this huge pile of stuff here. You can show it there. I don't know if that helps, but we've got all kinds of stuff that I'm basing things with. So I'm doing a lot of basing with my, looks like just a hoo hoo water-based markers. I have the hundred set, which I've had for like three years. They are, they are going strong. So more of the lighter colors, although one dark color. And then I did light colors on top of it. I'm also doing some on top of those things. I'm using my Ahuhu acrylic paint markers. Again, I've had these three years and they're still going strong. Awesome. I highly recommend those. I've got a Posca paint pen. And I've got a Jelly Roll Moonlight pen. And one Arctic acrylic paint marker. This is more like acrylic ink rather than paint. This is not the kind you you shake and then pump. This is just it just has a has a nib on it that works like a marker. So if water-based markers and acrylic paint markers had a baby, that would be that would that would be what these Arctics are. So um, yeah, so a lot, for a lot of the tiny life, maybe I need to turn off this light here. Is that better? That's probably a little better. Um, so, for example, on these pink grasses here, <clears throat> excuse me, I just based them in water-based marker and then went over them with the Ahuhu paint marker. Um, I kind of, for this little tiny orange flower I did it with jelly roll and then I put the arctics paint marker on top now these things are so tiny that there's not much any <laughs> there's not any blending of color uh, they're they're really small so I, I don't feel the need I wanted to concentrate my blending up here even on the stalks I did the dark ahuhu marker and then on top I did a light jelly roll so you can see jelly roll here on the bottom, marker on top, marker on the bottom, jelly roll on top. You can kind of use them either way. Um, here I did uh, the fluorescent yellow water-based marker and then I'm going around it first with um, a white Posca marker and then on top because it's not really opaque. So then on top I'm doing, I'm painting ever so carefully the oh my new stuff that I got the bleed proof white Dr. PH Martins I'm watching a lot of painting videos and they they talked me into that mine is really thick is it supposed to be thick I had to water it down is it supposed to be like that and it feels like it feels like wash to me I don't know if that's what it is but that's what it seems like so I'm going to go with that. It's not acrylic because on one area, ooh, sorry I bumped you, my bad. On one area here, gosh, we can kind of see it right there. I, um, I went over it with the green and so I took my Posca marker and I tried to go over the bleed proof white and it just made a mess there, which makes me think that the Posca acrylic paint marker reactivated the glue. The, the, the gouache, the bleed proof white. So I'm gonna have to go over that again with a brush, but it's fine. I don't know what I'm gonna do these. I think I want to introduce some blue into the picture now. So I think I'm gonna add blue to these leaves. The bees I want to be blue. 
definitely these little doodad things here. I don't know what those are. It's a very, it's a very fantastical scene. Um, I'm going to introduce some blue there. So then it's kind of scattered all around. I don't know what these will be yet. I'm definitely going to do one tip to make these pop out a little bit. If I just did them in color pencil, they probably wouldn't pop. But if I do them like in acrylic paint marker, they're going to pop a little bit more than if I just did them in pencil. So something to keep in mind. Um, so yeah, I'm going to use some kind of acrylic paint marker on those. I don't know yet what color they will be. We'll see. It's still flushing, its, flushing itself out in my mind. Here on these flowers, which is where I spent time really blending colors. I mean, that's the main focal point. It's the biggest thing on the page. That's probably where you want to spend your energy, you know, doing something hard like blending of colors. The rest is kind of easy, mindless coloring. I used, for that, I used six, yeah, six colors, that's a lot. Um, we've got, I don't know if it's going to focus. This is Process Red, I'll just say them. This is Hot Pink, these are Prismacolors, Hot Pink. Um, we've got Yellowed Orange. Um... Spanish orange, I think this is Spanish orange. Right now it just says the uh, French name. We've got canary yellow. And I need to move my light a little bit here. There we go. And cream. So I really like this color scheme. I've used it before and I like it. It's And I don't use it a lot, but I really like it. Since I really like it here, um, I think I'm going to... Uh, this is Magical Jungle by Joanna Basford. I'm working on a whip page here, something I've been doing a long time. Here's part of it. It's it's a double page whip page, but um, I think I'm going to use that same color scheme on some flowers in here. I'm really focusing kind of towards the oranges, reds, and pinks in this color scheme, I think. So, yeah, I'm going to use that. I don't know if I'm going to use those exact six. I think before when I've used that color scheme, I had, I don't know, three to four. Those flowers are much smaller than these big flowers here. So I may take out a, a color or two. We'll see how it goes. I may take out the cream and the yellowed orange, possibly. But I don't know. We will see what I end up doing. So that's... Just one blip for now. I'll see you in a second. Hey, hey, we're back. All right, so I thought I'd pop on because mm, I really like the way my the wings of my bees came out. Now, I've just based the bodies, but um, I was debating with myself on how to get the wings to be how I wanted them. So... I first took, you can see that over here, I first took my apple barrel white, and it's already very transparent, but I watered it down with some water, and then painted one coat over the wings just to make, Hannah Carlson has very dark black lines, which is great, I don't mind the dark black lines, um, just to diffuse the dark black lines a little bit, and then because I wanted to paint one of my dragonfly glazes over it, and I chose dragonfly glaze, which I don't know, you can't even see, but it's, well, I'll just read it, red, violet, blue, shift. I have severals, and I don't know if my swatches will show up on camera for you. There's my dragonfly glaze. I chose the red, violet, blue, shift because in real life, it has a slight blue tinge to it. I don't know if that's going to come across on camera because that's always different. But uh, now I use it watered down because it's very thick when it comes out of the... Oh my goodness. Okay. Hold on. So it comes out looking like that. So I water it down to paint with so that it paints like butter. 
but I wanted it to have a slight blue hue. Now, the hue. now this is dark compared to what it looks like, you know, once you put it on. Uh, but to get that, I took my Tombow. Dark blue here. Oh, I got paint on my Tombow. Sorry, wiping it off. Um, I took some Tombow there. Added my water. I like this. I'm going to be using this elsewhere, definitely. And a brush. Let's find a brush here. And just mixed it all together. So like to get the the dragon glaze to paint over things. So that is how I mixed that lovely blue color. Now it seems dark here, but it's going to go on much more subtly on the paper. I don't even know if the blue shift is showing up on camera. It may not. It usually doesn't. Um, but it has a very subtle shift, man, that just pops off the page. Oh, there we go. I think you can see it right there. Yeah. Gorgeous. Love it. Came out really good. So easy way to dye your dragonfly glazes. Of course, you could probably use acrylic paint, watercolor, any of those things would work to do that. All right. I'll see you in a bit. All right, so I thought I'd show you what I'm doing here. I'm just, I've based everything with alcohol marker and now it's the fun part. It's all about the mark making. So I'm definitely going to trace around these flower-like shapes with gel pens and probably do some kind of designs in these interesting end of the flower shape, the petals there. I don't know what yet. I'm um, going to go around, going to add some color to the orange dancers here. I think with yellow, maybe do some kind of pattern in their bodies or something. Something very movement-y. I don't know where it's going. I may or may not mark make on the various red bubbles. I'm not sure yet where it's going. haven't decided what those things are going to be yet. <laughs> so... Yeah, now, now the fun part, I, I really like to go to town with like mark making and pattern making and stuff like that. So we shall see where this ends up. Please stay tuned for that. All right, we'll see you in the next clip. All right, well, I just got done ink tensing all of these leaves on the trees. I mean, sorry, this is a whole long page here uh, with oh my gosh can you believe it? look at all those leaves gosh I kind of almost wish that the artist had just drawn in a blank thing so I could go in and just impressionist paint it or something um but yeah each leaf is drawn <laughs> I'm not going to probably shade and shadow each leaf uh, but what I am going to do so I've, I've based it all with ink tents and now I'm looking at my water base markers these are my Ohuhu water base markers I have a hundred and I have a few Tombos down here which may come into play I'm going to because it's really hard to see really hard to see like I can see the leaves in the foreground relatively easily the ones in the background are harder to see so normally I would do this in reverse I would put in the dark colors first because that seem you kind of work from darkest to lightest usually at least I like to um, but in this case I think I'm gonna go in with something like 37 which is almost like highlighter yellow and maybe something like 31 which is kind of an orangey yellow yellow orange color and do some of the front leaves first and then maybe a, a brighter green I don't know I don't know what yet also doing some of the front leaves and then hopefully I will be able to see the back leaves to put some of the darker colors in there for the backer for the back leaves so that's the goal there and I may probably work back and forth I may do some of the front leaves and then I may I really want to get to the, the tree bark here 
the trunk of the tree um, just so I can see what's going on there I think a few places I like painted over it with ink tents I don't know I need to be able to see what's going on and so after that after I do do the water base markers for the leaves I'm not sure what's going to happen after that if I'm going to go in and shade a little bit here and there or shadow a little bit here and there I don't know we will see how it looks because this is this is a lot of leaves it's a little overwhelming right now so step by step is what we really have to focus on all right so hopefully I'll see you later when a little bit more of this is done okay we're back um, this is the next blip I don't know <laughs> I don't know what the last blip was but we're gonna talk about some things that I have planned here so yeah this is scary looking this is this is my brain on creativity is what this is <laughs> I'm just kidding um, we're in curious creatures and I've showed this in many blips I think in many whip blips um, it's the big what are these giant squid pages so hopefully you can see okay yeah I think you can obviously still don't have my shelf up someday the shelf will be up all right sorry BB-8 in the background there um I've decided on my color schemes here for this it's a little bit hard to see let me see if I can make that easier uh that's not helpful <laughs> okay so you can see here along the edge this is how I kind of judge how things will look I put them on the edge that way I can hold them right next to where I want to use them so we've got a series of things here now I'm gonna get them out here they're here they're all here they're just jelly rolls and markers and what are these pentel dual metallic hybrids they're a variety of things um, so we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. We got nine, which seems like a lot to me. But usually I start coloring the little patterns and stuff. And quickly one will get thrown out or something like that and I won't come back to it. So it's good to have some extras. Now I really, I'm really digging the gold. The one that I'm using kind of on the orange squid monster there. I'm less so here as the purple is hard is harder because this is lighter it's going to be more attention getting because it's going to be lighter this one is harder to come up with ideas for and I'm less excited about these these are actually over here I've got like I've got, I've got things situated all over the place um, I may start doing that and I may end up you know getting something like acrylic paint out or paint pins that are lighter to kind of balance with this. This one's probably not going to stand out as much just because of the colors that I chose. Which, you know, as I was planning it, I knew was going to happen. So that's where we are right now. So hopefully I can start this pretty soon. I've gotten to the stage where I finally, like, decided on some colors. After you've decided on the colors and you start doing it, it's then kind of a... It kind of morphs into what you really want as you start seeing some of the colors on there uh, you can then start to make decisions yeah that works yeah that doesn't work maybe we're going to cover that up whatever the case may be so that's where we are in curious creatures put everything back i don't want to get them mixed up with other projects so As I was talking about, I think in the last blip or recently, I'm also working, well, I'm working in so many things, but I have a million, uh, uh, what seems like a million whips going. That's Maya's fault. It's your fault, Maya. Um, let's see if we can find it now. I love this book, Magical Jungle. It's probably my favorite Joanna Basford book. But as promised, I did, can we see anything going on here? Um, so you can see here, I was using the color scheme that I talked about. We've got process red, and I did decide on only four. I mean, it's a pretty small flower. 
if we hold you up you can see one right here it's a pretty small flower so I'm only using four hot pink Spanish orange and canary yellow for those um, and I have it's hard to see I don't know if it even shows up on camera maybe a smidge on my camera I've based these two flowers and these two flowers over here with Supra Caran d'Ache watercolor pencil. This is Granite Rose. I don't know that you need to see that, but that's Granite Rose. It's very light. I haven't painted it yet. I thought I'd paint one on camera here. Um, it's kind of, at least when I tested it on my printer paper, which doesn't always give an accurate color of what things are. It's kind of, there's probably high shine there. It's kind of um, old parchment with a hint of blush in it, I guess we'd say. So I'm not sure what that means. It will come out here on this more high quality paper, but we're going to, we're going to start to activate it a little bit. So let's find my favorite brush here. Okay. It hardly seems like anything. As it dries though, yeah, it does have that old parchment-y color. Can you see it okay? Hmm. And I'm not, I haven't used my ink tints and super colors a whole lot. I've used my ink tints a little bit more. I don't think I've actually used my super colors, the few that I have in a coloring book yet. This is the first time. It's, this is a good place to experiment. If it goes terribly wrong, yeah, we can just color over it. It's fine. It can always be covered with something. Either could, In this case, probably could just go right over it with colored pencil if I decided I didn't like it. Although I rather like it. I envisioned, you know, adding stuff on top of it, of course, because this is just one base layer. Um, and I'm not sure if I want it to be kind of all light or kind of high contrast, so light with kind of a high contrast colors like wouldn't those dots look good if they were like a super bright color I was also thinking that I might like to try to use some of my other ink tints and super colors to do the whole flower in that sort of medium. Yeah, I think this would make a really good paper color. olden style paper
I like, you can see that, well, I can see the difference <laughs> in activation. Um, let's see if we can hold this better for you. Between the activated one and the just kind of neatly colored one here, it, it is slightly more intense, just slightly. I don't know if that's going to come across on camera or not. It's very light. I want a light, delicate flower. We shall see what happens in the future, though. As I progress, I change my mind often, so I still have to finish these flowers here with the, with the four color scheme that I just showed you and these over here. So it gives me some good stuff to do today. Doesn't look like anything bled through. Of course, it's so light that eh, nothing is probably, it's not going to show. So I'm going to continue activating these. I think that's going to be it for this whip blip. Um, I thank you for joining me. I'll see you next time. Live long and prosper. Have a good day. Bye-bye.